Hello everyone, this is Teacher Marian. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new to this channel, please like and subscribe and don't forget mine. So for today's video, in our subject, Assessment of Learning 2, we will be talking about normal distribution and standard scores. After watching and studying this topic, you should be able to explain what is normal distribution and to illustrate it in the graph. Describe how the normal curve is divided into different parts. Explain the concept of converted scores, Z-score and T-score and their uses. Explain the different areas in the normal curve and lastly, you will be able to explain what is skewness and its different types. Now let's go on to the inputs of this lesson. Okay. Let's start with the Gaussian distribution. Gaussian distribution was named after Carl Friedrich Gauss in 1809. During the 19th century, this distribution was applied and used in the area of probability and statistics. Other name for Gaussian distribution is the normal distribution. It is a probability function that describes how the values of a variable are distributed. It is a symmetric distribution where most of the observations cluster around the central peak and the probabilities for values farther away from the mean taper off equally in both directions. Extreme values in both tails of the distribution are similar. In terms of student scores, normal distribution is symmetrical with majority of the scores falling at the middle ranges of scores and few scores appearing toward the extremes of the range. Normal curve. The normal curve represents the shape of an important class of statistical probabilities. The normal curve is used to characterize complex constructs containing continuous random variables. Many phenomena observed in nature have been found to follow a normal distribution. Some human attributes such as height, weight, intelligence, and even social skills can be said to be normally distributed. When represented graphically, the resulting shape resembles that of a bell where there is a single peak at the mean. As you can see, it is a symmetrical bell-shaped curve, an asymptotic. Asymptotic means the tails do not touch the baseline or x-axis or abscissa. Its measures of central tendency or mean, median, and mode are equal. This is a theoretical curve from which teachers base their interpretation. Notice that in the curve, the mean, median, and mode all coincide. The curve is divided into parts according to the size of standard deviation. The percentage in each part shows how many cases fall under different portion of the curve. Now, add up the percentage above the baseline between 4 SD units below and 4 SD units above the mean. Notice that 99.98% or almost all scores in the normal distribution fall between the three standard deviation units below and above the mean. For example, if we were using the normal curve as a model for distribution with a mean of 61 and a standard deviation of 7, we would expect 34.14% of the distribution fall between 61 and 68 and only 0.13% of the distribution to fall between 82 and 89 as the following illustration shows. Notice that for a distribution with a mean of 61 and a standard deviation of 7, 7 points are added for each ST unit above the mean which means 61 plus 7, 68, 68 plus 7, 75, 75 plus 7, 82, 82 plus 7 equals 89. And 7 points are subtracted from the mean for each SD unit. 61 minus 7, 54, 54 minus 7, 47, and 47 minus 7 equals 40. Thus far, we have talked about scores that come directly from the test. These actual scores or obtained scores are called raw scores. Consider the following. 
Chan obtained a score of 85 on his psychology midterm and 90 on his history midterm. On which test did he do better compared to the rest of the class? At first glance, you might say he did better in history. Well, this may be true, but how do you know? How sure are you? The point is that without additional information, we can determine which of these scores is higher or lower. The information we have, the raw scores, exists as part of the two distributions, one for psychology and one for history. If we can determine where John's scores fall in this distribution, we would be able to answer the question. We need information that describe each distribution which are the mean and the standard deviation. Let's add information one piece at a time. First, we add the mean. The mean in psychology is 75 and in history is 140. Let's organize our data. To answer the question in our problem sample, let's have first our second topic which is all about converted scores or standard scores. The first one is the Z-score. Z-score tells how many SD is the score above or below the mean. The distribution has a mean of 0 and an SD of 1. The formula for Z-score is equal to x minus x bar all over SD, where Z means the standard score or Z score, X means the score, X bar means the mean of the sample, and SD means the standard deviation. And if we are to solve the Z score of Jan in psychology and history using the formula, the result is this. In psychology, z-score is equal to 1, which means 1 SD above the mean, and in history, z-score is equal to negative 2, which means 2 SD below the mean. So now, we can surely say that Chan is performing better in psychology and not in history. The scores of Chan in psychology and in history can be computed because the z-scores are already known. Use the formula given. Compare the t-scores in two subjects. Now, t-score is similar to z-score except that its distribution has a mean of 50 and st of 10. The formula is t is equal to 10z plus 50. And now, here's the solution. In psychology, t-score of John is equal to 10 times z plus 50. By substitution, we have 10 times 1 plus 50 is equal to 60. While in history, t scores of John is equal to 10 times z plus 50. By substitution again, we have 10 times negative 2 plus 50 is equal to 30. Now, let's locate z score and t score in the normal curve. We have here the legend. History is the red dot, and in psychology is the yellow dot. Students, please pause and try to understand the graph or normal curve given. And now, we are down to our last topic, which is all about skewness and kurtosis. Real-life data rarely, if ever, follow a perfect normal distribution. The skewness and kurtosis coefficients measure how different a given distribution is from a normal distribution. The skewness measures the symmetry of a distribution. The normal distribution is symmetric and has a skewness of zero. If the distribution of a data set has a skewness less than zero or negative skewness, then the left tail of the distribution is longer than the right tail. Positive skewness implies that the right tail of the distribution is longer than the left. 
while the cortosis statistic measures the slickness of the tail ends of a distribution in relation to the tails of the normal distribution. Distributions with large cortosis exhibit tail data exceeding the tails of the normal distribution. Example, five or more standard deviations from the mean. Distributions with low cortosis exhibit tail data that is generally less extreme than the tails of the normal distribution. The normal distribution has a cortosis of 3, which indicates the distribution has neither fat nor thin tails. Therefore, if an observed distribution has a cortosis greater than 3, the distribution is said to have heavy tails when compared to the normal distribution. If the distribution has a cortosis of less than 3, it is said to have thin tails when compared to the normal distribution. Some distributions are not normal like a class of selected fast learners or slow learners. These classes are not symmetrical in distribution, but a symmetrical called skewed distribution. Skewness is the degree of departure from symmetry. If it's skewed to the right, it is positively skewed distribution. When it's skewed to the left, it is a negative skewed distribution. When it's positively skewed distribution, the thin or long tail of the curve goes to the right part of the distribution. Most of the scores are low. Hence, most of the students got scores below the mean or SK is greater than or equal to zero. While on the other hand, the negatively skewed distribution is when the thin tail of the curve goes to the left part of the distribution. Most scores are high. Most students got scores above the mean. SK here is less than or equal to zero. The formula for skewness is equal to three times the quantity mean minus median all over ST or standard deviation. We have here a sample problem. Find the coefficient of skewness of the scores of 30 grade 4 pupils in a 45 item test in mathematics. The mean is 38.50, the median is 35.25, and the standard deviation is 2.50. So the given is the mean, which is 38.50, the median is 35.25, the SD or standard deviation is 2.50. And now we are to solve for the skewness. So the solution is formula skewness is equal to 3 times the quantity mean minus the median all over the standard deviation. By substitution, we have 3 times the quantity of the product 38.50 minus 35.25 all over 2.50. Hence, the answer is 3.9. What does skewness 3.9 mean? The value is positive. The score distribution is positively skewed. Hence, most of the scores are low. Thus, the students performed poorly in the said examination. Just like skewness, kurtosis, which is a measure of whether the distribution of data is peaked or flat relative to a normal distribution, it has positive and negative too. Positive kurtosis indicates a peak distribution while negative kurtosis indicates a flat distribution. Kurtosis are of three types. The first one shows flatness, which results from the data being less concentrated around the mean. It signals a heterogeneous group. This is a platycritic distribution. The second one is similar to a normal distribution. However, there is the tendency for a fluttered peak around the mean, noted in a very large group. Last but not the least, has higher peak around the mean. There are lesser variations within the group. The students have almost the same capabilities. 
third one or the last one is the leptocritic distribution. That's all for today. I hope you learned something.